is to get us looking at bases and the idea being we drop you at a base you've never seen before and how do you set up how to attack it how to defend it what are some common patterns you need to recognize how to hold different point uh common point groups and this is just trying to a major flaw we have in a lot of our pls at the moment is we're not very active we get people we do a great job reading the map pick the optimal base to take it we drop a giant gold star on and say go let's go do that thing and the thing is do what though uh, you can get people to a base, but actually leading, reading the uh, flow of battle and what strategies are going to work and what aren't. For example, a max track crash is very common. However, it will not work at all bases depending on where your spawn point is, how open it is, and how accessible it is to vehicles. So, welcome one and all. Uh, yeah, VR training is absolutely useless. I just needed a spot to get us all gathered. So with that, we're going to switch to whatever continent doesn't have a queue. Which I think is Ezemir or Amorish is both. the closed one. I don't think either have a Q. Oh yeah, because we're losing terribly on both. Okay, uh, we're going to head to... We've done a lot of Ezemir and there's a lot of pop rolling around. Let's do Amorish for just a moment. We can go to some of the turned off bases. So the other fun part is we're going to pass around PL. And you're going to get to draw on the map. We're going to use that tool today. I don't use it much during live myself, but for our purposes today, it's going to work out really well. Here, I have a Valkyrie up so we can fly around. Absolutely, I'll grab one as well. So here's what I want uh, one of you guys to do. Pick any base on the map, probably one that we don't look at that often. Just someone shout one out. They're probably one of the Warpgate bases. Okay, I'm taking snack suggestion, and we are seriously just going to look at Soltech Charging Station, which I don't remember the name of. If you want to get in Snack and Ice Valkyries, you're welcome to. You don't have to. An excellent horn. It really is. Okay, so we're driving up, flying up to a new base. Here are the things we're immediately looking for. Where is the capture point, and where is their spawn room? So I'm going to drop my Valk. Oh, God, that wasn't a good landing. Okay, and I'm going to open up the overlay. So if you want to look at the map. And this is another thing I don't practice often enough. No, wait, okay, there we go. Then a hot second. And okay, then... Yeah, I should have done some more practice runs. Okay, so the first thing we can recognize is the spawn rooms, which I've highlighted a light green and is not super obvious. Uh, always check if a base has a teleporter and where that, teleport, where that teleporter leads them. Next thing you want to look at is the vehicle terminal. Uh, well, no, the le next thing you want to look at is the capture point, which it, here is pretty isolated. And we kind of have this area in bright orange where this capture point is actually pretty exposed. Uh, and then finally, the last pretty critical thing is uh, vehicle terminals, as easy as they are to forget, but you don't want to get screwed by them, especially if a base is open for vehicles. So I don't think I've ever ac I've actually ever fought at this base before. So this is a really good example of the type of thinking I want to encourage for all of you. We're going to look at A point, and that's the area we want to hold. Uh, you capture a base from the capture point, so that's the place you want to start thinking about it. Since we're here and we have a second before the enemies show up, uh, we can run around and see where our choke points are. So this capture point is open to the sky, which sucks. Uh, if they have any sort of air presence, if they have a bastion, we're screwed. Um, if we're at the warp gate, we, we, uh, they have a bastion. That actually seems like a fairly common occurrence. Uh, so it looks like there are three major gates uh, into A point. There's one at diamonds. There's one at spades. Diamonds, spades, 
And is there a connection to that powerhouse there? It looks yeah. like there is. There is okay, one. so then one, one at hearts. So, that means that my first instinct is if I was going to have my squads hold here, that's where you'd position people. If I have multiple squads, I'd have them watch one gate, the second gate, and probably not outside this door, but just inside into the main lobby area. This is actually, a, I'm really glad we have a powerhouse here. The building under, like, Spade's Hearts is called a powerhouse, by the way. No one was familiar with that. So it's, so it's the sort I of... I fought at this base multiple times, so I know how to actually hold this. Sure, but I don't want the right answer. I want to teach people how to get That's on the That's why I'm waiting. Okay. So that's the first thing you're going to look at. The other thing I really like about this powerhouse is it has this door right where I'm standing that looks out on diamonds where you could sort of suppress the entrance to diamonds from cover. So maybe in that case you actually move diamonds inside the powerhouse as well, at which point you just need to remember to watch your flank uh, with this, like, northern... I keep... I need to remember which waypoint's which. So hearts is still a concern, but we can kind of watch hearts from one door. We can watch diamonds from another door, so having a presence on this bottom lobby would be incredibly important. Uh, for This is probably where I'd actually set up the base and where I'd set up a router if we could, um, just because it lets us lock in the major entrances into the base. The other thing I haven't seen a straight answer for is do they have another way around through the solar panels? It doesn't they look do. like it, but that catches me. They do? Yeah, yeah the bridge. Ah, uh, okay, so then that's going to require some attention as well. Not to mention, <laughs> it's super easy to pull up a sunderer and just use it as a ramp to get up over and over that wall. Okay, yeah, I could see that. Alright, so that's just a good example of what you're looking for, is critical choke points and places you can hold easily. One thing you never, ever, ever want to do is you want to make sure that you keep your people back by the capture point. Everyone wants to run forward, everyone wants to go and farm spawn. My rule is, unless you have a 70% overpop or more, uh, try to keep everyone back, discourage them, say, hey, we need to hold the line here, and the people will still come to you as long as they're not being farmed at spawn. Um, but the trick of being farmed at spawn is it makes you susceptible to something like a max crash, where you're able to pick off the attackers yeah, one by one. That's a good example of a bad use of outfit voice. That would have been better done in outfit text just while we're on the roll. Um, yeah, so I like holding this powerhouse. Um, I, you need some sort of presence on that bottom lobby to watch the doors, and maybe something up onto the two bridges across, and then this bridge here. So I think our actual defensive line is pretty easy. It's the road. Something like that, and then we keep some sort of presence in the bottom lobby to watch those two doors. So that's my answer. Um, we came to it really quickly. Odds are you would have hear heard me give orders in that sequence. I would have told people to watch the gateways, and then I would have encouraged them to come inside. It also depends on what kind of resistance we're getting. If they have a whole lot of air presence, holding that bridge is going to get brutal. Uh, and we're going to probably need to reconsider that, and we'd want to hold the powerhouse maybe more intensively. Um, so adapting to the situation. So before I pass it over, um, let's talk about the defenders then. If we assume that they're holding at the powerhouse and at the bridge, odds are they won't. People act in a zerg, and not many leaders are actually active enough and have cohesive enough units that people will be just a little bit everywhere. Um, when you're defending a base, you don't need to kill everyone. You need to pick one specific path and shove through uh, to try to get to point and get them off, get the timer slowing down to get you enough time to kill off spawns. Uh, in fact, if you get there fast and you have three minutes left on the base, go kill spawns first and worry about the point in a minute or so. Uh, take that time. You don't... Um, Unless you're in the last couple of minutes of an alert, you have time to take a breath and think and think out your moves. So defending this base, you do the same sort of process that we did here. Where's our vehicle terminal? Where's our teleporter? Uh, where's the A point? 
my first instinct would be to try to put as the defenders i'm going to change my colors yet again and i'm going to change it to purple uh my first instinct would be to try to push to the powerhouse so would be a lot of people so you just want to make sure that you're talking with them um see if you can't get a good solid push of people when you're running to a defender base they don't want to run out on their own you want to have them grab a friend stay with the group so that they can push together impulses if they have that line well defended that's the point that we check out the teleporter and we try pushing the bridge. Uh, or if we try something creative, like with what Snack said, with pulling up a Sunderer to try to use as a step. And so doing a solid push as a single put, um, as a single like solid shove means that they're going to move, if they're active, they're going to move more forces to stop your first push and hold that first line, which means if you swap strategies and do the second one, you might be able to get around them. So that's a good uh, reason to be aware of multiple patterns as well. I'm curious, Snack, what's uh, your thoughts, the optimal way to defend or attack the base? Since you so, said you have fought here before. So if you're attacking, the best way is to hold powerhouse and the top floor powerhouse and just have this road lined with uh, anti-infantry and anti-air. Yeah. Read it like the other base that's stupidly dumb. Uh, what's the name of it? I lost my train of thought of what base that is. Is it on, on the inside? It's on this base, or in this uh, continent. Chemical Company? RMX? I still got a few empty slots in my platoon. If you'd like an invite, please type next in the chat. But yeah, you just hold the powerhouse bridges, and then you just line this road with anti-air and anti-infantry, and then you hold this bridge. Then you just have everything locked down. So, anyone have any questions? And if you're defending it, it's uh, gal drop. 100% just gal drop it. Yeah, You're considering so it's an to open point. Eight. So, just dropping on this point smashes all defense structures. I could see that, yeah. Because it's so open, you just yeah the thing from behind. This is also the sort of base where, like, a late orbital or something, even if you're very, very late, how open it is, people would have yeah. to run, and you might actually beat them. So, here, here it comes for the terrifying part. I could lecture you and we could walk from base to base, um, but that's going to get really boring and it's not actually a good way to learn this. I have one more thing to point out at this base, but start thinking for yourself because I'm going to pass squad lead to someone else and then you're going to get a turn marking up a base and we can talk or, or we, a couple of you can work together and share your thoughts. Hey Vox, uh, for a moment. Squad. Yeah, I'm aware of that. Uh, so you want to start up a Bravo? You can. Sure, let's do that. Snack, I'm going to drag you to Bravo. Question. Besides, a lot of people have I, uh... platoon chat in a more convenient key anyways. Someone had a question there? Uh, yeah. I was going to make another mention. Up here on the rock where Hart was, to the... North would be a very good spot for snipers and other type people to defend from. Just since it's so close to the warp gate, you just put a bunch of people on this rock side right here, you could clear out the point and then push down from there. I'll be totally honest, snipers are the most ineffective way of clearing a point. No, I know, but that's what I'm saying, you push from that rock ledge with light assaults, heavies, snipers, stuff like that. It's Especially an interesting thought. It. It it's is an interesting thought. My question would be, if you're getting up there, I, I'm not sure it's the optimal path. Like, if you're doing an airdrop, Snack made a good point where you drop straight on to A. Oh, yeah, um, if you're, like, maybe trying to send, set Sunderers up back here, um, I don't know if you can run up. Well, it's pretty smooth. It's yeah, an interesting you thought. Get up here. And with anvils, In fact, that might actually here. be really good for the attackers, too, just from that angle. Okay, I'd, I'd like people to join me in the powerhouse quick, because I just want to teach you guys the lingo on these, because it's very useful and it's very well recognized. 
if people know one building, it's usually this one. So, and I, yeah. So this, the room I'm currently standing in, up on the second floor, looking out across the bridges, uh, these doors are referred to as dubs usually, and some, and the doors gets extended to the entire room. If you're defending a point in a powerhouse, you're probably defending in this room. You'll see it at so, so many bases. So then if we go out into this room over here, this is the hallway. Uh, it's nice and short, and there are two stairways leading down. To our left is the fat stairs, because they're thick. And to the right stairs, um, to the right there are the skinny stairs, because they're thinner. The fat stairs have one to three doors open, and we count them left to right. Fat one, fat two, fat three. And then skinny stairs have the skinny stairs door. And just like all of your building layouts and planet side, some doors will be open or shut. But usually the interior of the building will look exactly like this. When you're holding a powerhouse from the top, you usually want a high presence on the top of the stairs, looking down with turrets. And you want a couple of people using the doors to peek and suppress the bridges if they're open. Now, again, if we were the attackers here, we wouldn't be expecting a major attack from A, but we might be expecting people to push through dubs. So we would be watching dubs. And then we would have, instead of holding at top of the stairs like normal, we'd want to be able to look down and suppress the gateways. So that would be a good reason to have people down in this bottom area of the lobby. I just wanted to get that out of the way because that's good language to know. Not everyone will know it. If you're running a public platoon, you're going to want to teach people it. But again, good defenders are going to try one lane of attack uh, at a time. So it's really good to be able to say they're coming through dubs, they're coming through fat three, they're coming through skinny stairs. Because experienced I've... players will recognize it. So Vox, I'm going to refine your callouts a bit. Hallway is also known as 50s. People call this 50s. And you don't call fat for the doors. It's just one, two, and three. Fair enough. These are only doors. It's, it's, it, those are the only doors with numbers. So, who's feeling uh, brave? Just, just to clarify a little bit more, 50s is the doors between the point room and the hallway. Those are, yeah. are 50s. Yes. And it's usually used for the hallway as well. 50s also gets used to refer to the second floor and triple stack buildings, so there's an open and a close, but it's a different 50s. Uh, that is floor. not true. That is not used in the high skill crew at all. Open 50 and closed 50? Nope. It's open and closed. That's it. Short and sweet. That's why okay, I... Okay, so... So, um, callouts are different. And this is why you want to define them for your platoon. As the platoon lead, whatever you use is correct. You just want to define it so people understand what you're saying and can speak to each other. Is anyone feeling brave enough that they want to take a stab at another base? It's okay. We're not going to laugh at you. It's just here to share your ideas and to practice that reading. I'm brave, Father. Captain, you already know what you're doing. I want to ask someone newer, but if no one's feeling comfortable yet, then I'll give you a turn. I don't know what we're doing. <laughs> Are you going to throw hey, us a random, a random uh, base, or what? Yeah, that's kind of the idea. Or you can, if you guys really want to throw, or pick the next base, preferably one we haven't seen. Because, again, the idea is, you see the big bases you fought at before, you have practice in, but it's all these little random bases that will screw you. And so I want to teach you, instead of saying this is the right answer, I want to teach you how to find the right answer. Oh, okay, okay. Or I got a good, a, a good answer. Box. Let's corpse secure mining. We get fought at at that base, but no one knows how to att attack it or defend it. That's an interesting one. I, yeah, no, that's another one I don't think I've seen. So that cool. Works. Does someone want to give that one a try, or should I pass it over to Captain so that someone more experienced runs through it, or Snack Cam? I'm going to hold my stuff for last, since I'm probably the most experienced when it comes to the buildings. 
Is this just callouts, or is this Sunder setups and placement, or...? How do you this attack is... and how do you defend? How do you attack and how do you defend? defend? So the goal is, okay. yeah, the goal is not giving people the right answer, it's teaching people how to dissect the base so that they can attack and defend it. Okay. I can do it. And uh, the right answer see. constantly Alpha changes, by the way. I know at least seven different ways to attack the previous base. Currently, the one I said is the current way, correct way. <laughs> Private Dougie, I'm going to give you platoon lead. Yeah. And you can take a turn at this one. Everyone, we're going to be heading to platoon waypoint, lift corp secure. Alpha squad, it looks like someone was kind enough to have there in advance and set up a beacon for us. You're welcome. And the beauty of having someone who likes to place beacons. Alright, platoon, waypoint is actual. Oh, uh, this is a four-point base, I'm sorry my friend, this is gonna be a little more complicated, so... Yeah, it is. I'm not, yeah, so I'm not expect, what the goal, my goal for this is I'm not gonna tell you you're right, you're wrong. I'm, I'm going to question you, I'm gonna ask you for your thoughts, and uh, if I disagree with you, I'm gonna try to guide you towards what I think is correct, or you might dissuade me in the process. Because again, I don't. This is another one I don't think I've fought at before. It's a four-point base, so it's a little bigger and a little more complicated. I know you fought here, Vox. I, this is not very frequent. So I think obviously here we're gonna get uh, Alpha on Alpha, Bravo, Bravo. We're gonna have the squads drop beacons on the waypoints. Or on their, on their, yeah, on their. Attacking points. or defending? Uh, that's attacking. And I guess, uh, I would say also, defending, Just start I mean, with attacking or defending. I would say, uh, I would start say, with uh, attacking. Attacking, right, yeah. yeah. Yeah, definitely. And, uh, I guess if we came in with, uh, galaxies, we drop on the point. Uh, we have, um, let's see here. So we when have, you uh, spawn view, here. You can edit. Yes, yeah, so we have spawn on alpha waypoint, so we're going to have to watch this. Where's the teleporter? And we also have Bravo, we have a teleporter. It looks like both those two are spawns. So we're going to have to watch both those places there. So the good news is this uh, spawn room and the teleporter are kind of close together, so you know what direction the defenders are coming from. As long as you don't go too far forward. Okay, so I noticed Charlie is pretty much right next to their spawn. So at, uh, uh, maybe on this, and I, I don't have much experience, but I would say I would hold um, Bravo, Delta, and Alpha. Alpha, yeah, and and. I'll hold those three, and if we could go up here and get Charlie, uh, that'd be good. But that would be like last resort. I agree with that thought. That's a good thought. Okay, and I, and I again, I'm not really too sure on those things, but that's you know, uh, I think it probably if you got that point, I guess maybe it would knock a, a maybe a minute or two and a half or two minutes off, maybe possibly. So what you're saying is keep pressure on C while holding the other points. Copy. Yeah, that's what I would do. And then see, um, I'm looking for like maybe router spots, so we can drop a router on B. It looks like B, and B, uh, right on point would be good. Uh, we have a uh, cover, we have a roof here, and then uh, we can push uh, C. So let me mark. There's not many good router locations at this base. Yeah, so what Snack said, I agree with your instincts of putting a router on B, and maybe D if you have the luxury of having two, but the big flaw I'm seeing is this giant pit in the middle, where D and B are so far apart that you kind of have to pick. And I think I agree with you on B, because it's close enough to A, that you'd be able to hold the two very aggressively. But it's a rough base. Yeah, it's a very rough base. And the if you place a very aggressive router in the uh, banana building up here where I'm at. Uh, that's also a good place to put one. I've seen it used effectively in this corner. And but it's, it's aggressive. For Delta would be getting a sender up on the hills. You don't necessarily need to anvil one in, because from the east side you can actually drive a sender up. 
and we don't have good access to it from their point. So instead of having a router up on Delta or near Delta, you can throw them right behind this ridge. You can actually fit two on these rocks. That is correct. The, sec the second Copy. one, because there is a little, uh, there is a little pit as well. So the second one that's right immediately to the east of the equipment terminal, also throwing up sky shields on it, that gives you another access, kind of towards Charlie, with a safer one back behind the ridge next to Delta. It also gives you the high ground for access to the rest of the base, so you can just pop straight down from Delta to the Alpha point. Biggest counterattack you need to worry about is if they bust out from Charlie on the west side towards Bravo Point, they have jump pads. And that, those jump pads will give them access to the towers and straight across to Delta. Yeah, Delta has, yeah, I know it's towards Delta. So yeah, uh, again, I agree with your assessment for a router on Bravo, because that uh, makes it easier to hold this landing pad so they can't get mm -hmm. access to these jump pads. Yeah, so that's what I would do. And um, I don't know back here on Delta, yeah, like you guys said, Maybe get a sender up here. That would be a great idea. So that's how I guess I would do attacking. Uh, defending. Oh, boy. So when you're defending a multi-point base, I didn't say this with the other one, the question is always what point do you try to push first? And Dougie, I think you already answered that one. I yeah, think it's so very obvious on this base. It would be Charlie. I would say Charlie, <laughs> then the Bravo. And Bravo, it looks like you can get on the jump pads, go to Delta. And, um, and once you get those, Alpha is easy drop down. So I go Charlie, Bravo, Delta. Uh, first Charlie, then Bravo, then Alpha or Delta. And I would have uh, spawns. And as, was, as we got close to the points, we'd have um, uh, platoons, dro um, squads dropping beacons. Yeah, beacons I agree. Are always good. What Captain said is good too. Uh, recognizing where Sunder replacements are good and common is good for attackers and good for defenders so that you can direct people there preemptively saying, I'm not sure, but if I had to guess, they're going to put this sun spawn here. Sunders are like our most common tool for respawn, so having a good eye for where they should go is. There's probably going to be some, so it's nice to know where they should be set. Yeah, there's typically a Sunderer placed near B point as well over here on the mm -hmm. left side behind these rocks. It's not effective, but it's usually there. Where Captain currently is hovering. Yeah. Okay. So we did Still great on that there. base. Thank you, Dougie. Can I get PL back quickly from you so I can move sure. some people around? No problem. Thank you for volunteering, my friend. You did awesome. Yes, yes, you did. Yeah, thanks, man. No, I appreciate and uh, all your thoughts. No, I appreciate that. Bravo squad stacked. What up? All right. What yeah, phase do we want to head to next? It? Unfortunately, Vanu isn't doing amazing. Uh, so what's the one that's in the middle of nowhere? Well, actually, Amherst, we get pretty good coverage on. So maybe another one close to the warp gate. Quaddy, west. Quaddy, what? Quaddy Mountain would be a good one, but it's it's a little bit hot. Because Quaddy Mountain's actually pretty... Or Fortress. That one little tunnel. Fortress is currently turned off. That'd be a good one to try. Yeah, let's head to Kawadi Fortress. Do I have someone who wants to volunteer helping us dissect this one? Again, it's not a right or wrong thing, just your best guess, and then the rest of us are going to comment and help guide you to the right answer. Yeah, this is for training and practice. If you answer incorrectly, and we tell you You're that thinking. you answered incorrectly, then you've learned how to correctly do it. The important thing is at least making an attempt at solving the problem, because it gets you just starting to think about how to how to approach the solution. And then just more tools become apparent. I guess I'll give it a try. Woo. Awesome. I'll pass you PL. Let's uh, fly over. Alpha, if you're not with us already, we have multiple factories up with space. 
Uh, they got a, you got a Thunderer here. Just picking up, uh, stragglers. And look, there you go, you have a beacon. Actually, having a bus running around with us is a good thing, because now you can see the, uh, deploy zones. Yeah, sounds good to know. Okay, Dragoon, I'm gonna pass you PL. Pass the bus around. I'm trying to look in the bus, I want to double check something about the yeah. tower. So how do we defend this monster? Well, let's start with an attack. So the first thing you need to know, no. where are they spawning from? Where's the capture point? What's in between them? So in terms of protecting versus an attack, right? Well, let's, whatever you want to do first. Pick one. Fair enough. Uh, spawn point is in the southeast corner. So, spawning from there, of course you want to go to Alpha, but to better hold this, I guess holding either the walls or the middle point would be the smart thing to do to prevent any attacks. Plus, people could spot out any spawn points from Sunderers or other means. Then, pointing guns inward, holding out a point, and possibly holding the center where the, where the tank uh, spawn point is, right? Uh, not spawn point, but, um, tank shield area? Okay, so let's take a look at this. Yeah. Um, the first thing we want to find as much as possible is choke points. So you talked about trying to hold the central area, and I understand the insti instinct that guide you, uh, guided you there. If you had to pick forward. choke points in the central area, where would you do it? If I had to choose a choke point, it would either be the, um, let me mark it. You do have the tactical map, if you know how to use that. I do not, but thank you. I can talk you through it. So if you open your map screen, there are blue tabs on the top right. There are five. You're going to want to click on the one that's a pen. And uh, let's just do a couple of arrows. You click on the one that's an arrow. And then what you're going to do is you're going to click on one point, which is where the arrow starts, and you're going to click on a second point, which is where the arrow stops. And then that arrow's done. You can make another one. But what you need to do is you need to hit the submit button before the rest of us can see it. Is the most underutilized function in side. The un uh, second to only the uh, custom voice channel. <laughs> You don't have to use it if you don't want to, friend, but it's, it's probably the sort of thing. best one to use, to be honest. Yeah, we're just on a very limited time, too. There we go. Yeah. Uh, okay, so what are you thinking with that? Um, if we're defending going from a spawn point to those two towers, those would be the most uh, susceptible areas where people could jump in. Unless they actually want to, you know, box us in and not spawn, but that would be stupid of them. They're trying to try to go to the outside of the towers, either skirting outside with infantry or having Sunderers near the rock formations to the north or uh, southwest. That's so where I would place my Sunderers to try to attack for this area. So defending, I'd go where those two darn circles is to try and defend it as much as possible. Okay. That's and an interesting. Be careful, task. there's a sniper shooting at people. Hey, can I just add, oh. um, I would like to add, like where I am, um, uh, looks like you could drive, or excuse me, Alpha Waypoint is, looks like you could drive a Sunderer through there or Anvil 1 in, uh, would be nice right next to the point, and it's uh, in a deploy zone. Also, like we were saying in the, one of the last phases, it looks like the road may be 
the crossing like because they can get over on the bridge but then they also have a spawn point on the below so i would say hold the road hold the bridge and then also hold the road i think um well okay so i think we're overthinking just a little bit in this case we have a capture point which is very very isolated so if you're attacking especially in the world of beacons and routers i would cluster all my attackers inside the a building because all of the rest of this is so open, and there's a vehicle uh, terminal right there, that if you're a defender, you can grab vehicles and clear out all of this open area. So I think the attackers, uh, you're right. holding just the A point room. That's why I brought up choke points earlier. Uh, is ultimately, if you're trying to look for two to three choke points to defend to get to A, there are no choke points on this base. That's why it's brutal to attack that the only choke points you got are the doors in the A room. And that is why the best strategy for attacking it is to drop it and use router. Um, yep. If you're attacking this base, router is your friend. It's the only way you're going to take this base without a massive overpop. Um, if you're defending, Vox is right. They can pull armor immediately bulldogs are disgusting hitting that point but it so it makes a difference what side you're attacking or defending from coming yeah. from the amp station to here is a big difference than from coming to the next thing from cobalt com from here yeah because if you're coming from amp you, it's really really hard if they have the fortress because that shield prevents armor from pushing in to bombard that A point and prevent the armor spawns. And the other way around, it makes it easier for them to pull armor from the amp station and drive it right through and bombard the A point. This base is just difficult. Yeah, so if, if I can get a I bunch of vehicles to... on the interior, like if you've got enough numbers like anything that's like you, you always want at least like the two squads at least two in the point room anything after that if you've got more than a full platoon then filling the like middle part with anti-infantry vehicles and controlling vehicles from getting enemy vehicles from getting in i would recommend squads on the point and one squad focusing anti-vehicle and anti-infantry outside until you get pushed back to the interior, then you should just retreat. Yeah. To the point. Oh good, we have some dude party crashing. So I guess going over towards spawn point, towards uh, the northern tower, and then protecting Alpha and holding it, vice versa. Holding one of the nearby towers from one of the, well, closer to the objective, and then assaulted it from that place trying to hold it is also valid. Being wary of the uh, vehicle protection room or something like that. Not uh, good with that gun. <laughs> yeah, pardon us, Dragoon. I think everyone's a little bit distracted. <laughs> well, we're, we're kind of being attacked by a-holes that want to just farm us. Good lock on. <laughs> and this is why I would love to have Jaeger accounts. <laughs> yes. Okay. Any more questions or thoughts, especially from the newer people while we're here? Jerks. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, okay, just, let's uh, uh, right behind A. I'd say would be a good point also to put a router right behind A the building. I admit. Um, it's an interesting thought, but I I would be worried about light assaults just jumping over A and shooting you or coming in from the towers. I can yeah, off the, inside due to how this base is, typically people pull a bunch of anti-infantry armor, so that small gap between the building just gets farmed. Mm -hmm. uh, the best okay. place for it is in the A point. Copy. I think I got time for uh, one more, friends. Uh, so thank you, Dragoon, if you can pass me back PL. And then we'll pick one more quick and head over there. 
Why don't you have much time, Vox? What are you doing? Uh, dinner with my family. Ah, that's a good excuse. Yeah, it's the same reason I don't... It's the, yeah, it's the same reason I don't make it to a lot of our 7 o'clock events, 7 to 8. You know, we have no connection to it. Lith Club might not be a bad one. Central. See, that yeah, fought at quite a bit, and people don't know how to attack or defend it properly. This is embarrassing. I don't remember where Lith Club Central is. There we go. God, yes, it's in the middle of the map. Uh, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> so this gets fought at quite a bit, not by our platoons usually, but just having people that know how to attack and defend it makes it way better. This is actually this is a really fast if you know how to do it right. Yeah. This is a good case study. It looks like people are on their way. Let's head over there. This one's so fun. I'm riding with you. This one's definitely a fun one to try to attack or defend. Or just farm. Yeah, or just get get farmed or be farmed. <laughs> or be the farmer. Honestly, there's only one real good way that I know of to defend it. <laughs> okay, do I have a volunteer to try to dissect this one? I'm gonna let you know in advance, this one's a weird one, especially for the defenders and therefore for the, well, for the attackers if the defenders decide to make it weird. This one can be all kinds of weird. I'm near the point hole. Does anyone have a sky shield on them? I'm not running a sky shield right now. I do. Why? You know the spot where you can glitch it underground? Oh, no, we don't uh, condone using glitches. Don't condone the use of glitches. Uber. <laughs> Jack knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, that that's ca <laughs> Okay. That's accidental glitching. There's a different yeah, box. Yeah, it's it's a it's a good story. Basically the expeditions page is bugged and so uh, Uber accidentally used a glitch last night and got two expeditions running. By literally clicking a button, and then clicking another button. So, okay Vox, that's not actually entirely true. All that happened was he started to lag out, so he sent the packets for activating both of them simultaneously. Oh, okay, but he did it accidentally is the point. Yeah. So from his perspective, he clicked a button and then clicked a button. Yeah, it was because he was lagging out. The server seen him do both of them simultaneously, when in reality he didn't. Okay, a so I'm not getting a volunteer that. for this base, so I'll just do another one quick, because this is actually a really, really good example of um, how bases are weird sometimes. So the first obvious bit, uh, the spawn, the tele so the spawn room is at A, teleporter's at B, teleporter is way closer, so whenever you can, the defenders are going to be coming from B if they're smart. Now... It looks like there's only one obvi uh, there's only one obvious path from the defense to A, and that's on that big yellow arrow. But the thing is, uh, there's not, mostly because they have a higher altitude than you. Uh, well, yeah, so as, as attackers, your, your instinct no As attackers, your uh, instinct is to hold that defensive line because it's a good spot to cut off the defenders who are trying to run, follow the obvious paths to you. But uh, the trick with this base is it's also possible to go around on the mountainside, and because of the elevation, you can push from multiple angles. I'm going to update uh, onto that inner edge. So if you can fall down the mountainside, especially as light assaults or medics, you can run straight onto A point and grab the attackers from all along their defensive line. So that can make the fight really, really messy if you do it as one push. 
And when we're talking about alternating pushes and strategies, this mountain has, again, two or three major angles of attack. So if you're alternating, uh, you should be able to push people off clearly. Hey, Vox, the I'm other standing thing... at the one spot where you can run out from to go around the mountain. There we go. Smack is. So, Brava waypoint. Yep. Right There's there. a little uh, area, if you come out the, spot, out the uh, teleporter room, it's literally just a little arch you can just run out from under. So this is a good example of uh, a base where it looks really clean, but if you go off-roading a little bit, it gets just that much more complicated. Uh, the big obvious Sunderer garages at New Alpha and New Bravo are excellent to use. Um, but I disagree with Alpha, Fox. Alpha is yeah, really hard they, to they attack get, from. They get cut off very easily, too, is the other thing I'm going to say. Um, so you, uh, yeah, Bravo's the better choice. I'll, I'll go with Smack on that. Uh, Fox, and then those I'm standing where you can put a Sunderer as well. That's also true. It requires some finagling, but you can get a Sunderer up on Smack's location past those posts at New Alpha. This is the spicy Sunday. Yeah, this, this base is also an example of how strats to take it for Sundays have changed. So for this one, the Alpha Point used to be... Um, you, you could deploy a Sunday right on the Alpha Point. Not anymore, and I think they finally updated the no-deploy zone. They did. Ha However, you can still get buses up here, so... Cobalt... Oh you don't even need to handle it. Yeah, Cobalt buses up on the A-point are still possible, so you can defend this with vehicles. It's one of the few bases you can defend with vehicles. So if you're very cheeky, you can also defend with a vehicle too. Yes! And you have easier access too from your vehicle pad, which is just up on, on the road you, you go... It looks like... No, that, that's hard to do. <laughs> because the stupid thing throws you off the side. Alright people, so that is about all the time I have for today. It's really short and my apologies for it. But just to close up on an idea, whenever you're coming to a new base, the questions you ask yourself, where's the capture point? Where's the spawn room and the teleporter? Which one's closer, spawn room and the teleporter? Where do I find cutoffs? And how can I get those cutoffs close enough together that I can keep my platoon in one big space or in a couple of big groups so that we can support each other? and whenever possible, defend Sunderers and Routers. So it's all about looking at the base, if you can kind of abstract it to a bunch of walls and doorways, where can you draw those lines? Um, actually drawing them can be very useful, but it also takes a lot of time. So if you can talk people through it or use waypoints to say, I'd like you here and here, uh, that's usually pretty easy for people to, to go to the biggest beacon in the sky nearby them. Any questions for me quick before I leave? Are you going to have a good day? I'm going to do my best. You can always run a second batch of this, Vox, after you eat. Sorry that I didn't volunteer. I just wanted to go into sponge mode and absorb as much as, uh, as I could. Absolutely, Levy. Whoop, whoop. Oh, well. You guys have a good one. i got to get off to you. Yeah, thanks, dude. Appreciate it. All right. I gotta go make Mac, did you cookies. say you want to keep it running for a little bit? No, I said that if you wanted, you could take and hop back on and after you eat. Yeah, that's going to be at least an hour or we might have other things planned. I have no idea what's actually going on bail, tonight, bail, bail, so. Ah. Uh, see, All I'm right, good at teaching, it? just not based. <laughs> Um, okay, thank you all for coming. I'm going to go ahead and disband. It sounds like Creosis has a... Oh, one last idea, one last idea. Make sure, if your platoon lead's running, if you're going to offer help, ask first. They have the right to say no, and if you're offering advice, it's important that a platoon lead has an air of authority. So even if they're making a mistake, back them up on it. Try to give orders to support the mistake, because giving conflicting orders can damage the platoon too, and it can make it so the platoon as a whole is less effective. So, it's okay to offer your help, but always ask first. Yeah, I think we saw that earlier with the guy, me and Snack. 
Yeah. A bad call that's clear is better than a good call that's convoluted. Yes. I. Uh, no, I, yeah, I don't think you understand how bad the platoon was. <laughs> no, no, no. Listen, the thing about that is Mac, that we were is the... offering. Smack, yeah, we were the trying to biggest... help. This is the biggest point I disagree with your day-to-day -day on, actually, is this specific issue, but that's fine. I should also say, while I'm poking fun at Smack's teaching, he's the one who taught me half of the bases, how to hold them, how to lead them, so I still owe you for that, too. I disagree with you on a lot of things, but thank you for your help. Yeah, so I'm better at teaching infantry play. Uh, right. That's where I'm really good at teaching. Infantry training soon? Um, we don't have the infantry academy set up yet, and okay. air is supposed to be next. But you should talk to Ty. If you're looking for something infantry based, Hunter sure Killers is doing stuff on Wednesday and most likely the weekend. We have a training platoon on Wednesday, I think. Technically, it's now. just an op platoon. We don't do any training at the moment. Yeah. It's trial by fire. Well, yeah, pretty we much. Do, we do run through a bunch of the buildings, um, so if you guys want to learn about those, drop on. Ah, uh, right. Calamity does do the callouts a lot, yes, doesn't he? Does. he? Yeah. Every every time we start one up, he runs through it with the uh, with the callouts. All right, people. Thank you for coming. It's uh, time for me to poof. Have a lovely day, and I'll see you all on Araxis. Mm -hmm.